Hi, this is Joanne, and uh, the other day I caught a little part of a movie I had previously seen, Ratatouille, you know, the one with the rat, yes, the Disney movie. And But you have to remember that Einstein once said that imagination is more important than knowledge, so it's really wonderful to watch these types of imaginative shows, even as a scientist. Um, but there's a part in the show where there's the food critic, and he comes along and he wants you know, to just cut down this restaurant. He's very cranky. And uh, and then he gets a taste of ratatouille. And as it turns out, it just sort of transports him back in his mind to a time when his, um, some fond childhood memories. And then of course at that point, his heart opens and he becomes this generous human being whose mind is changed and all of that. So. I like to think about that concept of inner children because I believe scientists really have inner children who are quite active and quite playful and quite curious that we continue to access in order to get our work done. Um, and I think part of that is often revisiting um, in our mind and uh, things we did as a kid like digging in the dirt and mixing chemicals and looking at the sky and all of these things. Now, um, and I think a lot of children just have that naturally, and uh, but it's nice to add the knowledge of science in. Uh, now, not too often um, in the past have there been books about science for children that were written in a really lively manner. Now, this has changed in recent years. Of course, we have the publishers, Dorling Kindersley, that have done an amazing job in presenting scientific facts and concepts and, and images to students. Um, we also have uh, authors like Seymour Simon, who writes, uh, just is a prolific writer of uh, children's science books. But I want to tell you about my favorite set of books that's aimed towards middle schoolers and high schools, but I own them and I read them because it's just such a fun time. Uh, quite some time ago, there was a mother, and her name was Joy Hakem. She was sort of disgusted with the kind of books her children brought home uh, to read about science and history and thought, Wow, this could be so much more interesting. So she took the task uh, to uh, onto herself and wrote an amazing series of books for American history called A History of Us. And um, it's just this amazing volume of books that tells the history of the United States. So if you're an educator of any sort, a homeschooler or a parent, then you are well aware of these books. Um, and lucky for us that Joy Hakem went ahead and um, worked on a series of books for science. So she came up with a series of three books called The Story of Science. Now this, um, these books cover all of the physical and chemical sciences and really doesn't um, touch upon biology. So, you know, hopefully she'll get around to doing that. That would be wonderful. But, of course, as a biologist, we have to know our chemistry. We have to know our physics. So it's really nice to have these books available just as just the same. So these books are called The Story of Science, and the first one in the series is called Aristotle Leads the Way, and this book of course covers our ancient Greeks and um, the, the ancient astronomers and mathematicians and physicists, and of course uh, you can just imagine who is in here. Now this, these books are amazing because they have these interesting sidebars and notes, so it's just not pages and pages of white text. We have um, <clears throat> images from uh, the actual uh, people, we have portraits, we have books. Um, I don't know if you could see these. So um, it's just these are amazing books and it's told like the title says it is told like a story. It's so fun to read. It is so engaging. It's so personable. I just, I can't imagine that uh, children would not love this book because, of course, my inner child really loves these books. All right, the second one is called, uh, again, Story of Science, uh, Newton in the Center. And this book's a little thicker, actually a lot thicker. And this book, <clears throat> what's really special about this book, you know, it just, it, you really get introduced to all of the scientists. So, of course, we have Dalton and Pascal with the gases, and we have... Uh, Maxwell and Volta with electricity, and we have Becquerel with the radiation, um, and of course we have Newton and Galileo. So this the, this book just is amazing. Look, we have a page from Galileo's notebooks. We have drawings. 
And then, of course, she goes ahead and diagrams images uh, to make the scientific concepts very easy for students. Um, we have portraits from that time. This book discusses the history of things that, what was going on at the time. Where were things happening at the time? Um, it's, it's just so fascinating. It's, it's exactly my kind of book. The last book of hers is called, of course, Story of Science, and uh, Einstein adds a new dimension. Now, who would have thought you could teach quantum physics and relativity to high schoolers and middle schoolers? It, but she does this great job. We have it um, in here somewhere, actually, if I could find it. Uh, I probably won't take too much time. Um, this book um, covers um, Kelvin and uh, Planck and... Um, the Curies and Einstein and Bohr, Niels Bohr, of course, and uh, the Hubble telescope. It talks about Oppenheimer and the Manhattan Project. So, so we are talking about modern science in this book, Modern Physical Sciences. These, again, um, I can't tell you how much I love these books, and that sometimes when I just want to revisit some of these concepts, this is a good way to go, because, again, you can find your your physics formulas if you need to, and you can just find uh, all this information, but it's just told in such a wonderful way. I remember one picture of Michael Faraday that said, look at the intensity in his eyes. You can tell this is a man who wants to get things done. And that, you're not going to find that in your typical science textbook. Um, my personal uh, opinion would be, wow, wouldn't this be great to use these in schools and, and to make this part of a science curriculum because it makes science relatively painless and then you would do experiments to go along with it. It's just, oh, I can't tell you. These are the kind of books that I just want to walk around clutch to my chest all day long because I just find them so um, interesting and just so... I don't know, delightful, that's a good word for those books. Um, if you have a chance to check them out, I suggest you do. It's always nice to take some time and read something at a little lo lower level because, of course, scientists all day were reading things that are very high level, but it's nice to, to take a break and just to rediscover that joy of why we like science. So that's all I have to say today. Thank you so much. Bye.